Hey everybody, JC here. Monday evening, January 2nd, 2017. Hope everybody had a happy new year. And we're tracking some wintry potential this weekend. Now this January 6th through the 8th, which is this Friday through Sunday, has been on our radar for a long time. There's been a fairly strong storm signal at the upper level since, I don't know, just before Christmas. <clears throat> so we have been tracking it. And when I mean strong uh, signal in the upper levels, there's blocking over Greenland, there's blocking over the northern Pacific, and that forces cold air, a big, a big wide trough, to spill into the south, uh, spill southward into the U.S. And there's no PNA, so the trough pretty much spills over the entire U.S. So we are heading towards some colder weather uh, starting this Wednesday night. Now. What we've been watching is on the lower edge of the Arctic front. Now, there's nothing really strong modeled here. There's, there's no 970, 980 uh, millibar storm bombing out on the benchmark and retrograding. There's nothing like that. This is actually a weak area or several areas of, of low pressure moving along the Arctic front. And when this big Arctic trough spills down here, down here is going to be our greatest area for development as a low moves basically from Texas through the southeast U.S. Now, we have two pieces of energy that I'm paying attention to. The first is right here off the northwest U.S. And, and we're not going to be in range of that until about here, 48 hours from now, which is Wednesday. Wednesday morning afternoon is when we'll be able to see this upper level energy right here. And if it's cut off, meaning, you know, it, it, it's a closed off loop here, separate from, from this short wave, um, then it's resulting in, in more snow activity downstream for the East Coast. However, if this energy phases into this short wave, then that has been resulting in the model runs that, that are showing less for, for the East Coast. So this is the latest GFS, and it's still pretty cut off here. So we have the Pacific wave, short wave. And we have the polar jet shortwave. So those are our two pieces of energy that we'll be paying attention to. Now, as we move through here, the, the polar jet shortwave move, moves through and, and deepens um, a, a good amount. The Pacific shortwave is still hanging back here. So the first period we're looking at this weekend is actually early Friday morning, maybe even late Thursday evening, right before midnight. But... But for the most part, Friday morning is our first chance of uh, light snow for, for our region. And that's associated with this uh, polar shortwave with some low pressure again riding along the front. Then this moves out. And this shortwave, let me go back. This shortwave eventually gets picked up by the jet. And it wants to ride through the southeast U.S. Just like so. By the time it gets to here... We then have our surface low that could present a bigger snow possibility for the weekend. And that would be Saturday, late Saturday night into Sunday. So we have what this is breaking down to is two waves. One that could bring some lighter snow Friday morning and the other that could bring possibly more of a significant snow event Saturday night into Sunday. So the surface models have been all over the place. I don't even... Um, I don't know if I want to show them to you or if I just want to stick at the upper levels here. Um, this is the 0Z GFS last night, and it was basically a weenie run. that The Pacific Jet energy hung way back, and what that did, first of all, this is, this is our rainy situation Tuesday and Wednesday, and that moves out uh, by Wednesday, and northwest winds pick up, and we're really going to drop in temperature on Wednesday. Your, your high temperature should be achieved early Wednesday morning. And uh, temperature, temperature should just drop throughout the day. And by the time we get to Wednesday overnight into Thursday, we're going to really be feeling the, the uh, colder air mass that, that's moving in. But um, here's our low that's moving across. And this is our first chance. The first wave Friday morning, as you can see, the first wave is very far to the south and east. That's because there wasn't much energy in the, the, the primary polar jet low. Uh, most of the energy hung back in the Pacific 
uh, short wave, which allowed it to deepen and become stronger. So by the time it, it gets to us uh, Saturday night into Sunday, look at that. That's a solid hit. And again, this was the GFS last night. It was a weenie run. You know, it's, it's, it's a run for the weather weenies who flip out when it shows a, a crazy situation at the surface. As much of a hit as this is, we've also been seeing a lot of misses to the southeast. Again, these surface solutions are going to spray north, south, out to sea, and all over the place. We really won't have an idea of what's going to happen until we're looking at the upper levels here at about 48 hours. 42, 48. So this is the first thing I'm looking for as we, as we head into Wednesday morning. By Wednesday, this energy will actually be over land here in the northwest U.S. It'll be over that many more sensors and uh, instruments that can feed in live observations into the algorithms that output these models. So you have better land sampling is what that's called. So I, I think we'll really be able to nail, nail down this track uh, come Wednesday. But from now until Wednesday, you know, we're just looking at model run by model run and sort of, you know, taking the surface solutions with a grain of salt while uh, paying close attention to these upper levels. Now, this is the latest GFS. Again, last night, this was that, that weenie run. This just came out about an hour ago. So again, our, our rainy mess moves in, clears Wednesday, strong northwest winds. Now, this is that first wave Friday morning. And some light snow actually does make it into Delmarva and southeast Jersey. It's nothing crazy. It's just light snow showers. But then the second wave was a little further south. And therefore, really only southeast New Jersey gets in on, you know, light to moderate snows. And that's that could still be a two to four, three to six deal in South Jersey. But again, this is just another surface solution. I'm not taking any one of them, uh, not locking any one of them into place as, uh, you know, what I'm going to go with for my forecast. But th this is where we're at. The, the euro favors the first wave. This one, Friday morning, a little more so than the second wave. The second wave, the euro kind of kind of lost it, but it has been having problems. So moving forward again, I'm going to be looking at, at this northwest energy. I'm going to be looking at this uh, polar energy, how they interact. If they interact and this absorbs quickly into the polar jet, then we might see a stronger light event Friday morning and nothing at all on, on Saturday night into Sunday. If this energy remains cut off and, and held behind and it's allowed to strengthen before it gets to here, then it could throw heights into the East Coast. It could, it could rise heights in the East Coast and turn the surface low up the coast and, and bring Jersey into the mix. I wish I had something more concrete for you right now, but I don't. I mean, this is the, you know, I'm looking at the, the best data here um, that, I can, that I can find. It's been strongly modeled as a storm signal again since before Christmas. So here we are, and we're approaching the mid-range forecast period. But let's give it until Wednesday morning to see this energy, how it really looks. Is it cut off, or is it phasing into the polar jet? So uh, I'll probably make a video every other day, but I'll at least put an article out every day heading in. And of course, we're going to start our snow map soon. I realize, um, you know, snow for some people it, uh, presents hazardous travel. Uh, some people have to travel no matter what. So there, there's a, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are who are on the fear side of this. However, there are people who would love to stand in the middle of their street under a heavy band of a mezzo band of snow and headbang while screaming YOLO. So there's love and fear out there. I, I I feel it both. So just try to be kind to each other and respect each other in the comments. Uh, this is, however, our best chance for statewide snowfall this year so far. I'm JC. Everybody have a great night and please be safe.